it looks so sorry. It look it looks like we're going to be in Cora, not Cora. Uh, Michael, so hang on a second. He's in the building, is he? He hasn't left the building. How many do we need? Three, don't we? Including me. Well, no, because... Oh, here we are. Sorry. I thought we were off. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Are you a substitute? Are you a substitute? Thank you, John, for getting because we were not quarrel without you. So we do appreciate it. Although we would have understood if you hadn't turned up or if you have to leave now to catch a bus home, we would understand that as well. <laughs> But in the in the absence of us being quarrel, let's carry, yeah, let's carry on. So, uh, thank Michael, thank you for being here, and you, John, and of course, as always, our support and our officers, uh, and Louise, who turns up. I don't know why often turns up relentlessly to these meetings. Thank you for that, Louise. Um. Apologies and any changes in membership. I have two apologies. It's Councillor Peace and Councillor Bacon. Over to you. Um, changes in membership are um, Councillor Garrett was appointed to the committee um, last week at full council. He's unable to attend, so Councillor Lilly is here as a substitute. The minutes of last meeting, well, let's just approve those because... Uh, oh, no, you were here, John, weren't you? I was here and um, I was just thought one matter arising, that's OK. So I'm popping that in, that's fine. Any Sorry, can I just do a matter arising? It's just that um, I did ask a question about the... Um, I was going to try and get an update on where, where we are now, because I used to be on this committee a few years ago and I came back and obviously things have changed. And I wanted to get a kind of an idea of where we were now. With Now we can set long-term leases, uh, what we are... and somebody was going to get back in touch with me. I think that was what it suggested that I was going to get in contact. I just noticed that um, uh, well, the strategic manager for commercial services is, uh, yes, so I shoot you, Sean. I think we should have had a conversation after that. We didn't have it all, maybe an update with some old papers or something just to get me up to speed. I think that was the point of just so I knew where we were with what was happening now, as opposed to what was happening like five years ago. That was the only thing. More than happy to do that. Um, I did send through a schedule of leases and licences on the 28th of June. You did? I did. Right. Um, okay. I gave a briefing note on Benton Harbour and also the phasing plan for the regeneration. Oh, fantastic. Right. Well, I've got to dig that up again. Right. 28th of June. Thank you for that. And I do apologise for suggesting you hadn't done it. Thank you, John. Um, there are no public here. There are none online. Have we had any public questions? There are no public questions. Uh, finance report. Are there any declarations of interest? You, I thought you were responding to that, uh, John. There are no declarations of interest. Thank you. For our finance report for Newport Harbour, that's page nine and ten of our papers. Uh, Sean, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, You've received a copy of the, the finance report. Um, a few key points to note. Um, the forecast is based on five months of the financial year and currently shows a deficit of 4K against budget. Um, the, the key points uh, within that um, projected deficit, are uh, there's a just over 20,000 forecast overspend on premises costs, which is primarily due to the increased electricity costs. There's actually uh, 24,000 overspend for electricity, um, but that's partially offset by some small underspends on premises related costs, 
which includes three and a half thousand on waste collections. So a net 20,600 overspend on premises. However, the one, the one point I would make in terms of that forecast for electricity costs, obviously we do need to assess the impact of the new energy contracts, which will come into place on the 1st of October. Certainly talking to colleagues in, in property, the indication is uh, the unit price for electricity will, will reduce considerably and potentially by up to two thirds. So that forecast could come down at the next Harbour Committee meeting um, and give us a far more favourable position. Um, contracted services, uh, there's £4,700 projected overspend, uh, of which 4200 was for a new outboard for the Harbour Dory. And we also needed to undertake the biannual navigation survey of the river um, so we know what the levels are uh, and we can publish those to ensure the safety of mariners. Um, that's the key points. Welcome any questions. Thank you, Sean. Uh, any questions? There are no questions. Sean, do you want to give us an update on um, uh, on Vent the Harbour, please? Uh, 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 financial report, at least, anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, the financial situation remains largely unchanged in terms of Ventna, as we reported at the last meeting, due to the award of a five-year management contract. Um, we've got an underspend of 42,300 on contracted services. Um, obviously, we got a very good um, tender price back from the contractor, and the contractor has now full operational responsibility for the harbour. So that takes away that element of financial risk from the authority and puts us in a far better position. We do have a very small overspend, um, which nets off against that um, for the cost of the designated person, which is David Foster from Marico, who occasionally comes to present to the committee. And also um, for cleaning of the slipway within the harbour, we did retain responsibility for the slipway because it's a public facility and that wasn't, tra that wasn't transferred as part of the management contract. So overall, a very positive situation in terms of Ventnor, as I say, largely unchanged, and, and that will remain, that should remain, for the remainder of financial year. Uh, thank you, Sean. It's a, a, a good news story, really. Uh, any, any questions? Just like to say, that's a really big, massive improvement on where we were a few years ago. Excellent. Congratulations on that. Sh Sean, uh, I was just going to say to prevent that, and obviously you now the situation with Ride, we've actually come up with a. <laughs> I just think compared to the few years ago, compared to a few years ago, you know, we've actually pulled round um, on both those harbours. And so I just really wanted to note that really, because we were actually, you know, going to sell them off and different things. So there you are. Buy two, get one free, won't we, Michael? <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks to a lot of hard work from our officers and Sean in particular, um, we, we, We've managed to uh, uh, change the, the financial position around and the responsibility uh, uh, on to uh, through, through a procurement bid, and it's put us in a much better position. Uh, a quick question for you, Sean. Are there any plans for our <clears throat> extra money that we've got in the bank? What's the plans for it? We can switch it to Newport, can't we? I think I asked this before. We can, um, although given the the forecast position for Newport currently only being a 4,000 overspend against budget. Um, I think Newport will come back in on budget, um, potentially with those reductions in utility costs um, and continuing to monitor the income. Um, so whilst we could, I don't think that we'll have, we'll have a need to, but, but it is there as a vote. I, I, I just thought about, we did talk at one point about extra birthing at, at Newport. And I know, Jonathan, you said maybe we're a little previous in, in thinking of that, but so I've just, just ask and just want to know where the money is. <laughs> You're quite right, Chair. We did discuss that at the last meeting um, and Jonathan's done some work on uh, the proposal for the folly to join up the, the two pontoons and that's gone in as a capital bid. So that's been put for members consideration as part of the budget setting process. So that if that goes ahead, if that's not funded through capital, we could look at funding that through that available revenue underspend. Thank you for that. Uh, you okay with that? Good news, really. It's all good news. That's why Louise comes. <laughs> so, the story yeah, I, writes itself. 
probably new to this committee and obviously I'm just a sub. Um, so please say that I can't ask this question or whether I can ask this question. But it just seems from you know the report of Ventnor, which is good good news, right? And obviously, you know, resolve what you know the previous uh, harbour with ride. Um, is there alternatives that could be for Newport then? Being being that two parish two town councils and you know being in, you know involved in finding solutions or past solutions, I just wondered whether Newport can. Sure, you can answer that, Sean. Thank, thank you, Chair. I mean, Ride was obviously the freehold was transferred to Ride Town Council, as everyone knows. Um, but Ride wasn't a statutory pool; it was a leisure harbour. Um, both Ventnor and Newport are statutory ports, and therefore there's a considerable amount of work um, in having, we need to have a new harbour original order which enables the freehold disposal. So when we embarked on letting the five-year management contract for Ventnor in tandem, we're working on and um, working colleagues in legal and potentially external legal advisors for a new harbour revision order, which would give us the ability to dispose of the freehold to a third party, whether that's a town and parish council or a private operator, but it would give, we would require that to give us the ability to undertake that disposal of a statutory port, and that would apply to Newport as well as Venma. So it is possible, but it's slightly more complex and convoluted. All right, can I just follow up with this kind of intriguing line of thoughts? This is it's interesting. Um, could that be could that be applied, for example, who would consider the transfer of the um, statutory support authority to Cows Harbour Commission as it's already there and it's already functioning and it's already running half Medina already? Would would that be a possibility rather than it being leave local authority? I don't see any reason why not. I'd need to do a little, little bit of research on that with colleagues in legal. Um, but I think the same principle would probably apply because it wouldn't be run by, wouldn't be owned and managed by the local authority. Um, uh, my fe initial feeling is, and we need to check this, is we'd still need a new harbour revision order to enable that to happen. But in theory, yes. So, uh, st statutory harbour authorities can be bought and sold. That's as simple as that, isn't it? Yeah. Jonathan. Would you like to give us a report on the uh, on your report? Our, our page is 13 to 20. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, so from sort of 1st of June to um, uh, it's actually the end of August. Um, um, we've had a lot on, but nothing too drastic or scary, which is good. So we've managed to get rid of all of the abandoned boats and now being they've gone. Either we've sold them or we've disposed of them. Um, we had a vacancy for a duty harbour master, and we have now got a new um, duty harbour master who started uh, end of July. Um, events wise, uh, there was a little festival in June, um, which kept us quite occupied for the middle of it. Um, Southern Water have been carrying out a fair bit of work down on their pumping station. So for our inspections of navigation aids and the other things that make up safe management of the harbour, um, we've we've had a new lights fitted by the hotel for the navigation lights, uh, so they're all up up and working. Um, we've actually had Trinity House come and do their inspection today, and they seem to be quite quite happy. Um, as Sean said in the budgetary thing, uh, we had Shoreline Survey did a full survey of the harbour uh, from the fo folly all the way down to the fly flyover. Um, and, and we've compared that with the original Shoreline Survey from 2012. And it's, it's encouraging to see that there hasn't been much change between those two sur surveys except for obviously the large area that we dredged in uh, 2019, which is still showing its dredge depths. Um, we've put some more safety ladders up at the folly, uh, making it easier to get out of the water if you accidentally take a um, unplanned swim. Um, 
during the warm weather, we've had a couple of shrinkages of the pontoon boards as they heat up, they shrink. So we've had to do a bit of adjustments to either extra screws or tightening them up. Uh, we've had a couple of water leaks down on the pontoons, but they've all been noticed uh, quite quickly and repaired by the harbour staff. Um, we did have a water leak that had to be dealt with by Southern Water on their, their main just before our visitors pontoon, but they did it within two, two days, so we didn't have a problem with supply on the pontoons. Um, most other things are sort of sort of usual things. Um, we've had a couple of sort of incidents, nothing major. Uh, uh, we had a couple of uh, false alarms during the Isle of Wight Festival, one of them which uh, was interesting that we had a report that we had a fire in the anchorage during the Isle of Wight Festival. And by the time we got there, we got told that it was actually someone starting their engines and it was an old motorboat with lots of black, black smoke. Um, but yeah, fun way to get the, uh, the adrenaline going. Uh, we've had a couple of boats, um, some of them tied up in strange places, thinking that they were gone aground, but in fact, they've just been tied in odd places. Uh, we had a yacht that got it wrong and was in our channel for a day while they were waiting for the tide to come back. Um, we've had a couple of boats when they're tied up have lent over slight, slightly, um, and sadly, we had one boat that sank. Um, but we recovered that quite quite quickly and it was recovered by, by the owner. Um, pollution wise, um, we tend to have a slight problem with the festival's holding tank ashore, but that was dealt with very quickly and it was only a problem for about half an hour, um, which, and none of it went into the river, so it wasn't a problem. Um, sadly, some of our swans, um, got coated, we think, in some sort of cooking oil, um, but we rang the RP, uh, RSPCA, uh, sorry, the Rule Protection uh, of Birds. They came and collected them. They've taken them away, cleaned them up, uh, and now they're fine. Um, we did have a look for the source, but because we've got so many rivers, the two rivers coming into the harbour as well, it's very difficult to tell where it actually arrived from. Um, sort of possible sort of dangers or near misses uh, during the festival. We had uh, one poor lady that uh, missed the step from her tender to the pontoon. Um, but as during the festival, we increased our harbour staff. Um, we managed to retrieve her quite easily. No danger, uh, sorry, no damage or anything else. Um, the other one is during the really good weather. Uh, we had a couple of people thinking the harbour was a great place to swim, but most of them informed that it wasn't a great idea and most of them went with it so that's good um other than that it's sort of it's with the high tides and the strong winds earlier in the year we had a lot of debris that was washed down so this is uh sort of tree branches and other such things so we just had to keep an eye on them but nothing major to remove um the isle of white festival uh, went very nicely. Um, they weren't weren't on site for that long a pe period because mainly there was another festival the week before. So it, they all arrived sort of on the mo Monday and they're all gone by the following su Sunday. Um, access was nice and easy. And um, yeah, for the number of people and things going on, it it was yeah no major dramas, which was great. But that's about it. Any questions? I'm yeah. Thank Sorry. you, Jonathan. Going through it all. Uh, John, I think Nick. Can you turn your mic off, Jonathan? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, this is a really good report. It's really detailed and it's really positive to see the amount of, of, of attention being paid to all this. I mean, you have a number of equipment checks is quite, you know, I found it quite surprising that it's, it's everything you do. You're really keeping a tight ship and I'm, I'm, in, I'm very, very impressed. Just want to make one comment, uh, Jonathan, is when you, when you write the report, can you try and make it a little bit more accessible to the public in a way, because you know, this is a public document. I mean, I'm fine. I'm, I almost think there should be like, um, with your report, you could put, you could do with a glossary, you know, like NPC. 
is the Newport no, it's Newport Rowing Club, NRC. You know, you, you throw in lots of abbreviations and lots of, and I was getting confused between, is that a name of a boat or is that a name of a mooring? And, and I was getting, you know, I was, it, sometimes it just needs to be a little bit more, it'd be good to read it through and make sure the sentences work. So you have a bit about the, um, when you take when you take out the boat, which is aluminium, and then you're going to weigh it, and it doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense. You think, well, is that that boat or is that another boat? Why are you weighing it? And it doesn't sort of explain. It's it's just a bit fast to, um, you know, for us we have to read these what every four times a year, and it's kind of you, you forget all the terminology and everything, you know. Um, it's just a, a comment, really, but I think I think I think it, what you've got in the report is really, really good. It really shows. I mean, like you say, first of all, not we got one drunk, you know, wandering about making a fool of himself, you know, but there's hardly anything serious going on. Oh, apart from that sewage problem, he's put you dealt with it again. You know, it's it's been it's just really impressive, you know. So well done. Hey John, there all know. Can you turn your mic off? Uh, of course, it's Newport Town Centre, not West White. So it, we know you've got your problems in West White that we don't have in Newport from <laughs> <laughs> antisocial behaviour, John. Um, we've got it well covered. It's noted. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I'm astonished that if anyone caught the programme last night with uh, White House um, about. Uh, the water companies and the discharges into our rivers, you wouldn't want to be swimming in any river anywhere in this country if the programme was to be believed. But there we are. Uh, thank you, Jonathan. Our get well plan, Jonathan, 21 and 22. Oh, yeah, sure. Just uh, on the back of what you've just said, is would it be relevant in the future um, to have Southern Water come to this meeting? I know that they're they're coming to ride next week to actually talk about that. Huh? Well, they've already been okay. Already been. And, right. and they and they don't dump anything into our rivers, of course. But anyway. Um, uh, Jonathan, I get well planned, please. Oh, strong. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll pick that up. Just in response to Councillor Lily's point, I'll send you through the presentation which they made, um, and they they looked at the the number of consented outfalls that discharge into the Medina, and they went through their action plan of how they're going to mitigate those and ultimately remove those. So I'll forward you that information, so you've got that. Thank you. But, uh, Still waiting for them on Apley Beach. So, in terms of the um, get well plan, um, obviously it's very, we've got two plans: one for Ventnor and one for Newport. Um, if I can deal with, and hopefully this won't mess you up, Marie, deal with Newport both in terms of the get well plan and the audit at the same time. There's a greater logic to doing it that way. So, in terms of the previous uh, Newport Harbour outstanding actions. There were two issues, both of which are ongoing and will remain on on the action plan. One is the ongoing review of the website, which forms part of the council's website, which was refreshed as part of the, the move to the new website. That is ongoing, that's reviewed periodically to ensure all the information is up to date. And the other is reviewing the navigational risk assessment. The review of the, the risk assessment has commenced and will be complete by the end of this month. So that was the only two outstanding items for all the previous audits we've had at Newport. As I alluded to earlier, we had David Foster from Marico um, on site Monday and yesterday, and he was undertaking, our, undertaking the annual audit of both harbours in relation to Port Marine Safety Code. And, and in relation to Newport, um, the key points um, which we discussed at the Washout meeting yesterday were there's been incremental improvements across the board, um, which is very pleased to see. And as Jonathan's alluded to, um, he was of the opinion of the harbour is always very clean and tidy. All the derelict vessels have been removed. It is an excellent standard of housekeeping, um, which I think, you know, if you'd visited the harbour five, six years ago, you'd have seen quite a different picture. So that's a testament to Jonathan and his team and the amount of work they put in um, to turn them around. Um, there's good engagement with the user group. We meet with them quarterly. Um, uh, we've got a set of agendas and discuss any issues which they have and keep them updated on developments from the harbour. 
the marine safety management plan um, needs to be reviewed and updated and that will be presented to the next harbour committee in January for review and approval. Risk assessments, whilst they've been updated on paper, they haven't actually been updated on the electronic system we have. Um, there was a slight, we discovered a slight issue with some of the system settings which weren't sending out reminders. That's in the process of being rectified. And as I say, they've all been reviewed, but they just need to be reviewed. Those reviews need to be reflected on the electronic system. And that will make it more efficient going forwards as well. Um, oil spill exercises have taken place um, in accordance with our oil spill management plan, but they just need to be formally diarised. Um, again, quite an easy, easy thing to rectify. Hydrographic surveys are up to date, as we mentioned earlier. As Jonathan said, the levels in the harbour are, are very stable since the dredging. Um, there hasn't been an accumulation of, of material within the harbour, so the depths have remained constant. And we've got one member of staff that requires Port Marine Safety Code training. That's the latest duty harbour master who we've employed. So that was the key finding. So all in all, it's very positive. Uh, we will get a full report back from Marico, which will be presented to the committee in January. But again, a very, a very positive picture. Um, no, no areas of concern, just a little bit of tidying up. Um, and, and Newport Harbour remains fully compliant with the Port Marine Safety Code. I'll take a breath and welcome any questions on Newport. Thank you, Sean. So comprehensive and 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 just indicative of the the great work that's gone on and it, improvements that have been made. Uh, you know, it's well well run, well managed. Something to be proud of, actually. Um, no questions. There are no questions. Oh, Michael. Well, in respect to our officers who obviously done a lot of good work. Is there anything that you feel that, you know, you need from us, from the committee? I think just con continue, the continued opportunity to be able to openly discuss the issues that arise in those reports and make sure you're updated and um, just your continued understanding of how the harbour operates and the involvement in that. Um, but now I think from an operational point of view, we, we've overcome the resourcing issue in terms of staffing the harbour um, more efficiently and more effectively. Um, it's now a safe environment, and I think it's just ensuring that ongoing investment as and when required. So we, we, we've got a second phase of harbour wall repairs, um, which is currently being designed as we go out to tender in October. That, those works will take place probably spring to autumn next year. Um, but there will be a further phase of works, which will be subject to probably a capital bid in next year's budget setting process. So I think it will just be the support for those funding requests as and when they come forward to ensure that that, that safe, clean, hospitable, um, welcoming environment um, for everyone. So just on that ongoing support, that's all I would ask. Um, Thank you for that. Supplement, do you, do you carry out a sort of customer survey, i.e. What, what does the people who use the harbour, perhaps pay findings and things about the work that's being doing? I mean, from my, experience, my, my only experience with the harbour, I said to do with Ride, um, and there's definitely now feedback from those users that they're happy with various changes and things. You know, there's still moans, but other than that, do you carry out such a survey? We don't. Um, as, as I mentioned, we do have quarterly meetings with the Newport Harbour user group, and we've got representatives of berth holders, houseboat owners, leased council premises tenants, private businesses, um, at marine, major marine operators within the harbour, so such as Vestas and William Shipping, um, commercial uh, operator, uh, local members. Um, so we, we encourage those representatives to talk to their groups. I take on board the point that, yes, we could look at doing a consultation. We, we've, we've done them recently for, which I started a biannual one for the floating bridge for users of that. Um, it would be relatively easy to do. Um, it would be interesting to see what the views are. So that's something we could certainly look to put in our action plan. Um, take that as a as as a recommendation, right? 
that you do because I think it'd be very useful to to have that information back at a future meeting. Do you agree, John? Yeah, I was going to suggest something actually. Um, I, I was going to suggest that the um, surely for harbour users, I was thinking people visiting, there would be TripAdvisor. You should be able to look that up for free, shouldn't you? That should be an easy thing to monitor uh, the reactions of people visiting the harbour. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we could we could look at that. I was just saying, Jonathan was just saying, and just in terms, we do, we need to look at the timing of any survey we're going to undertake. Because obviously, in the summer, we get a lot of visitors. Um, we've got our annual berth holders. And I think we might have two slightly different surveys, one one for resident birth holders and one for visitors. So I think we can take that away and, and look at how we can structure a survey to get the, the most beneficial information out of that. But the timing might be slightly different for both groups, but we can bring a proposal back to the next meeting on that. And the other point, the other point I think you just brought out is the fact you've got so many different customers, if you like, of people using the harbour that I think you do need to specialise and I think you have the, the, the users group is really useful because you can encourage them to do a lot more kind of like getting feedback themselves. I think that would be a, a good way to go. And they would probably devise the best method in their own for their own particular groups, as own companies, for example. Sorry, I just want to make a point earlier that um, you, it, what, when you look at the list for Newport and you think about all the work you've done over the last few years, and then you look at the list of events that looks like the list that Newport used to look, you know, but this long list here is how we used to come to these meetings, wasn't it? And it just shows the, the difference. Then we never looked at in such detail because we used to be the Newport Harbour Committee, didn't we, at one point? But now we're, I'm now just glad to see we're looking at both. It's a lot smaller, John, to be fair. Um, and, and just to reiterate, I, I have been, I, I, so, I haven't been to all of them. I've been to one or maybe two of the user group meetings and they're very useful because uh, the 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 people that turn up are genuine users of the harbour and through that group they have a voice into uh, things that could be improved or changed or adapted within the remit of what we're able to do as a statutory harbour so uh, I think it does work I, I, I yeah, if we're going to consult, I'd like to know what we're consulting for and what, uh, what you know, what outcomes we might want to see. Because I think you're getting pretty good feedback through the Harbour Use Group, but we'll have a look at it anyway. But spend too much time on it. No further questions. Thank you. Uh, and so um, our audit on 23 and 24. So I've, I've covered Newport in terms of the Get Well Plan and. The audit over the last couple of days. So if I, if I cover Ventnor in, in, in the same order, as you'll see, you've, you've got the Get Well Plan um, for Ventnor, which has been revised um, to reflect some moving deadlines. Obviously, now um, the Ventnor Harbour Management Company are completely responsible for Ventnor. Um, so David Foster, our designated person, has met with them and with Jonathan um, to look at realistic timescales to get the relevant pieces of, of work completed. So the plan you've got there reflects those revised deadlines. But interestingly, from his audit um, over the last couple of days, a number of key points came out which were, which are encompassed within that plan. But I think it's just that there are some positives in there. So I, I thought it was worthwhile rather than going line by line through the, the audit plan, and I'm more than happy to take questions on that, um, just to run through the, his key findings. But I say they are the work element is reflected in that action plan. Is it the opinion that the roles and responsibilities are clearly understood between the contractor, the, the councillor's harbour client, and the duty holder, which is a harbour committee? I felt that's very clear. Um, Consultation needs to be instigated through setting up a user group. Um, but again, as Phil said, reflecting the fact it's a much smaller entity. So rather than there probably won't be as many stakeholders and probably not a need to meet quarterly. So either a six monthly meeting or an annual meeting would probably suffice. We need to undertake a navigational risk assessment, which again we can do with Marico's assistant, and that will be on an electronic system which we're already licensed to use from them. Um, so it'll be a case of replicating part of what we got at Newport. The safety management system, which basically says 
your operation or how you operate the harbour to ensure it's a safe environment is in draft. Thanks to Jonathan, he's completed a draft which has been passed to the new management company. That needs to be completed now and needs to include the relevant standard operating procedures. An emergency management plans required. Basically a cut and paste from Newport, but recognising the smaller scale. Um, port waste management plan is required to say how you're going to dispose of all different types of waste that are generated from the harbour. And a hydrographic survey is required for, for the safety of users in the harbour, whether that's fishermen, uh, any visitors that come in because they are encouraging visitors to come in now. So all of those items are encapsulated within the action plan you've got, and that action plan has now been updated re with realistic timescales reflecting the conversation between Jonathan, David Foster from Marico, and the Ventnor Harbour Management Company. Um, I think in the past, I think it was quite optimistic perhaps in getting those items achieved, but now I think they're, they're realistic. Um, David will meet with them and with Jonathan on a monthly basis to review progress. Um, so we've got a framework in place to ensure that all the items that you can see on the action plan are actually delivered as they should be. Thank you, Sean. Where's Ventnor? We know, don't know. I say it again. What, you know, once again, it's, it's amazing, really impressive how much stuff you're getting done in this, in this time scale. I'm very impressed. Um, just a, a couple. One is, is if I remember rightly, of Ventnor, there was mainly just one occupant, which was the fisherman family. Is that still the case, right? And are they part of the Ventnor Management Company? Ventnor Haven Fishery are the lessee of um, the building and part of the infrastructure mm. there. Uh, yes, they are the principal user. There are a number of private fishermen who have berths on the pontoons within the harbour. But Jonathan, correct me if I'm wrong, they are actually subcontracted through, through Blakes themselves. Um, so they, they work, they're subcontractors, but they provide their fishing through to Blake's. Um, and um, Blake's, part of the Blake family, is part of the Ventnor Harbour Management Company. Barrett and Michael, there's been a long uh, uh, process of getting us to this, this, this place. Um, uh, including the procurement process. So. Yeah. Okay. No. Um, oh, the last question really was just from a risk point of view. It, who's the who's the I presume we're the the policeman if you you know they they um, who's the actual sort of officer responsible to that goes down and sort of checks on things then. It'll be Jonathan. Jonathan's our authorised officer through the management contract. And and that that gives a particular time of hmm, when you'll go down there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. No further questions. Let's move on to um, the item of the disposal of the freehold land and building situated. So, uh, Sean, do you just want to encompass the reports in our papers? Uh, I know, John. You know, you've been here for some of this. I think. Have you? No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but again, this has been a long, long process um, and we've arrived at where we are uh, because of that process. I I'm, I'm a little anxious, I'll be honest, although I know we need a decision on this and we are Quora, that there are not others here to 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 vote on this, uh, although I believe I probably know how they would do that. But I'm a little uncomfortable. Uh, um, are, are you comfortable, Sean, that we carry on with this? I might have to defer you to, to Joseph for any legal comments. Well, I, le legally, we're quora. I'm, happy to, I'm quite happy to go to the vote. I, I, I'm just asking, that's all. Uh, we are a small number and there are other members who are not here. Um, why 
my instinct tells me that there wouldn't there won't be a problem at all and i'm just asking if you're comfortable make a decision here that's core and law, legal and lawful uh, uh on a very small number of the committee members yeah um yes um thank you chair uh, from my perspective there's no legal issue with with the proposal so yeah michael I just feel that, uh, you know, if officers have done all this work, right, to actually then refer it, being that the next meeting would be, you know, hmm, three months, um, I you know, I feel it's not actually good enough if members haven't given in apologies or actually sort of come. And I don't think we should hold up the decision of that. And I would take responsibility for any decision I made. Thank you, Mark. I absolutely didn't intend to. I just wanted it on record that we've noted that we are a small number. Uh, that's all. Uh, therefore, are there any questions on this? Just to give a brief, please, Sean. No, no, no. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. This follows on from the previous report, which was considered by the, the Harbour Committee, which was looking at the freehold disposal of a building known as W5 and the land immediately adjacent referred to as w6 which is on the west bank of the northwest bank of newport harbour we received the the lease for w5 uh, expired and we received an expression of interest from the tenant which is the isle of white espresso company um, for the, would the council consider the freehold disposal um, we brought that back as a general item uh, well, a specific report, but a general request to the last Harbour Committee, uh, and it was agreed in principle we should look to progress that. So this report follows on from that. Um, some, some key points to note, um, proposed disposal now includes a small area of woodland to the north, and also the walkway immediately to the east, so between W5 and W6 and the key wall, which it didn't do originally. Um, myself and officers from property have met with representatives of the Isle of Wight Espresso Company on several occasions and have been negotiating around the terms and conditions of a disposal. The area of woodland site to the north would be subject to restrictive covenants, um, uh, but by doing so, by transferring the ownership, that would release the Isle of Wight Council from any potential expenditure for maintaining land for which there's currently no budget. Research that was undertaken in terms of the value of woodland, specifically on the island, demonstrated a value in the region of 15,800 for that area. Um, however, as they would be responsible for its maintenance going forwards, um, it was felt reasonable this figure could be discounted to £10,000. The walkway I referred to, to the east of W5 and W6, would also see the ownership of the key wall transfer to the purchaser. And they and accordingly they would take on the full repairing liability for the wall and the walkway as with the woodland there would be rights um, restrictive covenants placed and there would be a right of access at all times um, for the public to pass and repass over that area we, we looked at the the value of the walkway and also as you'll see from the plan there's a very small area which is colored blue between w5 and w6 and we discussed this with the independent valuer and their view was that there was no intrinsic value to to that land if authority were to retain it and by disposing of it it would free us up of our maintenance liabilities the recommendation in the report is to disposal of all the land edge red for the sum of 315,000. The purchaser would pay the council's legal fees as part of that freehold disposal and the capital receipt would go into the Newport Harbour accounts and would would form a reserve within the harbour for future works. Welcome any questions. Uh, thank you Sean, it's comprehensive. Uh, any questions? Sorry, I've got one question. The, uh, the actual uh, Sea wall, the river facing wall of W5 and W6, that retained, that's retained by us, is it? It's currently part of our, our inspection um, and, and maintenance schedule. We would transfer the ownership of the wall to them as part of the disposal and they would be responsible for its maintenance going forwards. 
what that disposal wouldn't give them is the right to more vessels there. We would still have a right as the, the harbour authority to be able to berth vessels. Thanks, Sean. Hey, Michael. Yeah. I mean, um, exactly what the Isle of Wight Espresso Company does there. The building W5 um, is used as their primary coffee processing plant. OK, um, so they take the raw materials there and they actually roast the coffee there and they bag it up ready for retail or would uh, sell to the trade. Um, what they're looking at doing on the site is actually undertaking a full refurbishment of the building um, to improve the facility, uh, but also, also to create uh, barista training facilities, an on-site cafeteria, um, and a more of a tourist attraction and a, and a destination and longer term completely separate to this proposal um, once they've undertaken all of that work and that will take a number of years um, they'd like to investigate the possibility of perhaps putting pontoons in so people could arrive by river and again making it more accessible and making it more of a, a destination for people but certainly they want to enhance the commercial element of it and make it attractive to the public to be able to visit learn about coffee but also to be able to be trained and get recognized barista training qualifications i presume that i mean part of the, them having a freehold would be that they're in a stronger position to borrow and to have the investment how many jobs are we talking here are they have they got a you know will there, will there be some jobs increase I don't know the answer to that, but I would say from the from the mix of facilities they're looking at providing, if they're going to be providing training in a cafeteria, that's extra to what they're doing already. So that would by by default have to create additional employment. So basically this is added value to the to thing and it's also you know, invest in a way helping an existing Isle of Wight business, right? to develop and grow. So it's uh, very much look looking local, isn't it? OK. All those things, Michael, a small regeneration project, encouraging, there will be employment. We don't know the numbers, but there will be. Uh, the area is not the best looking. We, we hope that will, that will be improved over, over time, uh, opening up the woodlands uh, and down to the river if they manage that and do that, becoming a destination to go to sounds. It's, it sounds a win-win for the, for, for the authority. It's uh, capital money in, into the harbour at least anyway. Uh, and um, an improvement on what we have there and less liability for maintaining the woodlands, which is a difficult uh, problem going forward. Uh, yeah, I, I can see the benefits, but I must say my feeling about it is, is, is ambiguous because I, this is um, Potentially, this is a very important uh, area for, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's, it's marginal, the woodland's completely marginal, but, you know, this is part of our harbour, and the harbour, I feel, there's a reason why it's in public control uh, and, in, and in public ownership, and I would have much preferred to see this as a long-term lease, because you never know when you're going to need it again for something. You know, the harbour is something you kind of need for the future. It's a, it's one of those assets of strategic value. So I'm, I'm just... Um, it, in wondering if it wasn't there any other way of making because it seems like we're charging a very tiny amount of money for these um, facilities um and what was then but yeah and we're, we're obviously once you've given it given up that the opportunity of rent we get what we get three hundred thousand we have to spend immediately a hundred thousand on the refurbishment of w5 don't we so we lose a third of that straight away so we end up uh, we have to pay legal costs as well don't we Four percent legal cost of those. What I read before, so maybe I got that wrong. That's not right. But uh, it just seems so. I was wondering, is it? You know, have you really explored the other option of of maintaining um, a, a long term lease, or was that just not, you know, acceptable to the uh, to the client? There's a couple of points I'd like to pick up on. Um, we did discuss with them. They approached us. To, to purchase the freehold, we did discuss a long lease. A long lease is not something they'd like to consider. They'd like to consider buying it. 
as, as Councillor Lilly said, it gives them a better borrowing ability, accepting the fact it's a long lease. Um, I did have extensive conversations with Chris Ashman before his departure, because um, obviously we've got the Harbour Regeneration Plan, um, and I wanted to make sure that if we were looking to dispose of it, that it wouldn't have an impact on the delivery of that plan. Um, the Harbour Master Plan doesn't include that northwest uh, section of the harbour, and his opinion was um, there's no his advice was there's no reason not to proceed with disposal as the proposed development does not impinge on Newport Harbour Master Plan and would indeed be complementary to the regeneration plan. It's worth it's worth uh, it's worth reminding John that they already had a 125 year lease. Sorry, sorry, Chair, just just if I may, in, in, in terms of the valuation, um, we uh, part of the, de the decision that was made, I think it was the January Harbour Committee on the original paper, was in proceeding with investigating the proposed freeholder disposal, um, the potential purchaser would have to secure the services of an independent valuer to be approved by the authority, which they did, and they had to cover the cost of that independent valuation. Um, the independent valuation was undertaken by a company called Edison's, who are a national company, and that valuation of 300,000 300, for the building reflects its age and its condition and the amount of work they would need to do to bring it up to an A1 condition, which it currently isn't. It's got old style critical windows, which obviously aren't energy efficient. Part of the roof is asbestos and needs to be replaced and needs to be replaced to modern energy efficient standards. Um, so it does, whilst it does seem relatively low, it does reflect the amount of work that they would need to undertake to get back to an A1 facility. If I can just finish off, I mean, the, the, fact, the fact that we, we're going to have to spend 100,000 on refurbishment of the building if we do keep it as, uh, ourselves, that would seem to be a clinching argument considering we don't have lots of ready money at the moment. Um, just to move it along, I wish to make a proposal to recommend that we accept the recommend officer's recommendation that the land and property is declared surplus to harbour requirements and disposed of, and that the Isle of Wight Expresso Company is treated as a special purchaser and agrees to dispose of the freehold, etc. etc. Right, I'd look for a seconder. And for that, John, John, you seconded it. Thank you for that. Um, That's unanimous. Thank you, Colin. Uh, it's great that we're actually supporting um, local businesses to develop, and and this will enable, I think, to secure jobs and to secure a very important tourist attraction. So, because um, it's a very good company. So, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, that only remains a uh, member's question. That's you two. Have you? Good enough today, haven't we, really? 